I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm bad, doing no cap Only got one, so you better go live it up Cash in the bag, stadium pack Baby, I'm bad, yeah. baby, I'm bad I just wanna stay bad, stay This is Amiel from Rich Forever Kennel, the Poodle King You are watching GH Dog TV GH Dog TV your number one TV for all dog lovers. My name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger. And this is GH Dog TV, your number one dog TV for all dog lovers. If you are new on our channel, you kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content. And then you also follow us on all of our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at GH Dog Blogger. Now, on today's episode, I'm sure. You're loving this beauty right here. Yes, today we are getting up close with a poodle breeder. Yes, a poodle breeder. So if you're a fan of toy dogs, poodles, trust me, you're going to love this video. And even if you're a lover of big dogs, you're still going to love this. But then before I get inside, let me acknowledge our proud sponsor, Josira Pet Food. Josira Pet Food. You have dogs. You're looking for the right dog food for them. Nutritional dog food. Just pick their contact details on our screen. You know, when you go to any pet shop, you ask of a product from Josira Pet Food. They've got dog food, puppy milk, puppy food, sauces, and what have you. And the beautiful thing is they've even got dog food for diet-sensitive dogs, which are grain-free and hypoallergenic. Now, dog lovers, let's go for a quick break. We'll be back shortly. My name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger. Stick and stay. Okay, dog lovers, welcome back from that quick break. I told you today we are getting up close with a poodle breed, and the name of this kennel is Rich Forever Kennel. Rich Forever Kennel, and the location is Oyarifa in the greater Accra region of Ghana. Dog lovers, I'm sure you're already loving the scenes right here. And I have the boss man right here. Now, let me get to the boss man. Boss, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's great finally getting into your kennel, boss man. You're welcome. <laughs> the the first time um, I chanced upon you, the first time I saw you was at the um, the Shizu show at Ebri. Yes, it was. I think there was a an all toy breed assessment, and you came there with a very beautiful poodle. I think that was the first time I saw you. Yeah, I I came with this meal. We came for assessment. Yeah. I very beautiful meal right here. So, boss man, now let me start by letting you officially introducing yourself to my dog lovers. So, the name is Ameyao Dompre, Debra. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a dog lover. And for now, I breed poodles. They're correct poodles. That's miniature and toy poodles. Okay, okay. Right. The, the correct poodles? Yeah, not the poodles everyone calls... The toy dog, uh, people, everyone says poodles, not those ones, the, the correct ones. Yeah. Nice one. That's the boss man right here, Mr. Ameyao. Don't pray, Debra, just like the blogger, Ameyao Debra. <laughs> nice one. So um, let's start with how did your love for dogs start up? I've seen lots of the poodles right here, and I've seen some kittens also around, very beautiful as well. But then let me start with how, how did your love for dogs start? Can you take us through it? I think my love for dogs started in JSS. I used to see nice dogs on TV, like in movies. So I always wanted a dog. So in JSS, I remember, I think JSS too. I saved money myself and I got myself a German Shepherd. You were in G JSS? JSS too. I got a German Shepherd myself. At those times, it was 500,000. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's 50 Ghana now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got, I got a German Shepherd, which got Pavel and died two weeks after. So my dad bought one and replaced it for me. So I, then I got another one. So th th that's where it started. So I started with German Shepherds. Okay, okay, okay. okay. For, for in JSS, you were a teenager. Like, you yes. just hit teens and you were able to gather money and buy a German. Where were you getting the money? How did you do it? It was my lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember I was saving like one, one CD for a while. And I was able to get it. I bought a female, a very nice dog. Yeah. 500,000. That time it wasn't small money. And you buying the dog and then after, how, 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 how long did you live with that dog before the Pavo set it? The dog stayed for, I think it was just two weeks. 
I, I, I didn't have a lot of knowledge. And those times, Google wasn't there that you can easily get information. So I think we were giving the dog milk, a lot of milk, and started having diarrhea. Yeah, in a few days, it turned to something. So the vet was coming to check. They gave the dog drip and those things, but it died. And that's where I heard Pavel for the first time. Then I started learning small. So it, it's been, and, and th this is, I think, 2000 and, I think five, n no, 2003. Yeah, it's been a long time. Wow, the, 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 this, is, this is very, very interesting, dog lovers. We, we just got started and trust me, I'm, I'm loving the conversation. So you got to your first heartbreak in dogs. Yeah. GSS2, way back 2003. H how was the feeling like for you? Like you having, by contributing to buy a puppy and then... Oh, I, I was actually very sad. And it's because of the sadness my father saw. That's why he got another one for me. But after I, was, I, was, I saved more money and I got a Rottweiler and added it to the, to the shepherd. So they became two. So that's how we started having dogs in our house. And so we later, we got, I think, four more German shepherds. But the breeds changed along the line as I grew up, yeah. But most of the dogs that came to our house, either it was my money or I'll get the dog, then maybe they'll pay for it. But I was the one going around bringing the dogs in, yeah. You've had um, a German Shepherd, you've had a Rottweiler. Did you did you go for other breeds as well? Was just the two? I've had Boa Boo, I've had uh, Boo Mastiff. What again? I don't remember those ones before I jump into it. Okay, so they were, I, I was doing big dogs. The, the Rottweiler, I had like two. German Shepherds, they were a lot. But after a while, we changed them. I had like three Boa Boos. I, I imported a black Boa Boo from South Africa, which it was a very dis big disappointment for me because the dog didn't turn out exactly how they told me it would be. It grew up very bad. It wasn't as big as I thought it would be. So, in bubbles, we were really chopping my money too. Their feeding is really expensive. So, I started switching. So, I started doing chow chows. I was actually one of the first people to bring chow chows. So, I imported chow chows from South Africa. There were two females. And when they grew up, okay, there were two females in a male, yeah. But they didn't look, they were chow chows all right, but they, do, they, they don't look like the ones you see online. Their mouth were a little long like this. So then I wanted to switch, get the correct one. So I imported one from, I think it was Hungry. Humble, you know Humble, right? So Humble brought that dog to me. Very nice male adult. So by the time the dog came out, I sold my meal and I had two female chow chows. And then the new meal come, very nice meal. I'll show you the picture later. That one too, I remember I had it for like, Three weeks, and on my birthday, we went for a dinner party. When I came back, the dog was just lying down. It couldn't move. When you call it, it moves just the eyes. I don't know what happened, whether it was heat stroke or, because the dog was very hairy, and I think switching the dog from, was very, wasn't the right thing, because it came during winter time there. So I think, I think it was heat stroke. So I just came to meet, and it was evening, I couldn't get any vest to check it. So after a few hours, it died. That dog was really expensive. At that time, I, I changed all my dogs to just the chow chows. And the male had died, so I had just females there with nothing to do. That, that, that really broke my heart. So I just gave the female chow chows out, and I stopped breeding. Okay, 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 okay. Dog lovers, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this conversation. From a young dog lover buying a German Shepherd, his daddy getting another shepherd for him after the first one died getting rottweiler boo mastiffs chow chow all of them that so le le let me take it to this point and then we get to where you reach at which point did you get into breeding how were you introduced to breeding like how did it happen i, I introduced myself to breeding because <laughs> the german shepherd the, the second one i got was a female so when he grew up we started getting puppies but those times it wasn't really for business. So even though we were selling them, I don't think it was much, like 150 CD or something. And that time I was staying in Takarade, so we were selling it to just friends and stuff. When, after SS, when I finished SS and I understood, the, and I did business in school, so I see the business side of it, I was like, let me take this serious. So after, with small research, I realized that Boa Boo was the thing at that time. That's when I started getting Boa Boos and Boa Mastiff. But because of the feeding cost and the stress, 
and doing the calculations on what I'm spending, what I'm getting, it wasn't tallying. So I wanted a medium breed, and chow chows were really nice for me. And I realized that somewhere, I think only one, that time, Ronnie, Ronnie's kennel had a chow chow, those times. And I was like, well, let me get one. And I imported, well, I wanted to be the chow chow breeder here, but it looks like it, it didn't work out. <laughs> but I was able to get a few puppies to sell before the other meal came. But I wanted to change the quality. Yeah, and when the quality came to you, and chow chows are really difficult to breed. If you ask a few people who have those ones, they'll tell you. They don't really fit the weather here. So it, it worries their this thing, their reproduction a lot. Yeah. Unless you decide you're going to shave them and put them in AC every time, and, and then that's too much work. Yeah. And when you, you, you came back from the dinner, you saw the chow chow lying down in the chow chow passing. How was the feeling? I'd like you to describe. How was the feeling like? It really broke my heart. It, 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 it was sad and very depressing for me. Like I, I still remember it. That's why it's because it was my birthday. I can't forget that particular day. Yeah. At that time, I used to stay in Spinkters. It was. I remember what I, I, I told my mother, even though I wasn't staying with her at that time. She told me that. She said it's in front of them. You're breeding on Jew, Jay, Jay. But only Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Which means um, the, 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 the breeding is not working out, so stop. Yes, I should stop. I should stop doing it. So I actually listened and I stopped. I stopped for a long time, almost like five years. Five years with just one Caucasian pet. So I just stopped breeding. Yeah. Then so you've stopped breeding for five years. So let's say don't, don't I won't even add the five years. Let's say you've you've stopped breeding. Your mom has advised you. So what, what again brought you into breeding? It's only one thing. Only one thing. But the, another reason I stopped breeding, apart from the fact that the dog died, you see, there are times that we used to cross dogs and you don't have puppies, don't get... And all those things affected the business. And if it affects your money, it affects the love you have for the animal too. So I think someone, I don't remember who told me, but someone told me there's a vet at a Belimpe, Dr. Connie. He does progesterone tests. So you can actually see when a dog has ovulated. And when you get that thing correct, the chances of getting puppies are, is really high. I was like, okay, then let me try. So that time, I didn't want to spend so much money. So I got three Maltese. Three, I remember three Maltese, yeah, they were, I think, two months. The ones, I don't know if they came with a Pavo or what, but the three, all, all the three died in the first month. The losses that we've had, all the <laughs> three died in the first month. So I was like, wait, forget Maltese. This thing I won't stop, I'll do. So, but, and I, so and then my friend, this guy called Nikwe, he's a Labadi. He told me he had Poodle, the correct one. So he sent me pictures. And I was like, oh, Charlie, this dog is nice. But I know game when he so okay, he'll give it to me and I'll pay small, small. So I took the, that's this one, the, the brown one. He's called Millie. Well, if you can call them so that they can join. Millie. Come on. Wow, dog lovers, that's Millie right there. Okay, can we get the others to? I don't know if it's Nera. Vendi. Anika. Come on. Wow, dog lovers. Check them out. Check out the, the, the family right here. Very beautiful dogs right here. Nice one. Yeah. So you were talking about Nikwe. So Nikwe gave me this dog. And he gave me some time to pay for it. So I went this dog was, I think, about 10 months. I really liked the way Mili was. So I told him I wanted another one. And he gave me Nera. This Nera. Come on. Come on. I got this one too. Yeah, yeah I got Nera. This beautiful one. Then the chemo hit and I, ma I did the progesterone test at Connie's place. And I had puppies. Even though I struggled to sell them because people didn't know the difference between these ones and the normal ones. When I mentioned the price, they were like, oh, I'll be putting there a thousand, thousand, thousand. So I struggled, but I was able to sell them. Then I was like, okay. I started researching more on the poodles. I realized actually they are very, very, the, one of the most easily trained dogs in the world. And they actually fit my lifestyle. Even though I have to take time to brush them, they were easier to feed. They don't need much attention. Everything was actually easier. And I was like, oh, let me just get more of the poodles. By that point, I also got, I think I got two packs, which I lost interest at a point because their behaviors were very different from the poodles. They were stubborn and they were very hyper. So I gave, I sold them. I got a Frenchie, I sold. I was like, you know what, let me just stick to 
my poodles. So I kept a few puppies from this one, and I got this meal from Humble. Then I think a few other ones, yeah. So I said I'm going to do. So actually, I took so much time. I learned about poodles. I learned the grooming, the care. So most of the dogs, I, I groom them myself. Unless there's a show and there's a style, I don't know how to do it. Then I let there's this guy called CK. CK will come in, yeah, groom them for me. CK. Big shout outs to C CK. Big shout outs to CK grooming. <laughs> CK did this grooming for me. We are preparing Vendy for the dog show, yeah. So then now I'm just doing the poodles. For, for, for how long have you been doing these poodles? Since 2020. The COVID, I bought the brown one that mainly during the COVID time, yeah. So, so that's when I, so I think it's been three years. Yeah, three years. Why the name Rich Forever Kennels? Was was that the name you were using before or you rebranded? The name I was using, I was just using my name, I'm our pets. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer of positive speaking. And I like Rick Ross, so the, the Rich Forever came from him. I was like, let me, let me just switch to that name and I, and I, I use that. Yeah. I, I love the name Rich Forever Kennels. Positive vibes, dog lovers. We are right here at Rich Forever Kennels. The location is Oyarifa in the Greater Accra region of Ghana. Very soon we'll get to my favorite part where we check out the names of the dogs and everything. But then let me acknowledge our proud sponsor, Josira Pet Food. Josira Pet Food, the pet food with passion. You have dogs, you're looking for the right dog food for them. Go to any pet shop or you pick the contact details on our screen and you get a product from Josira Pet Food. Poppy Milk. Poppy food, wet food, dry food, sauces. Just link up with them and trust me, you're going to love it. And the beautiful thing is they've even got dog food for diet-sensitive dogs which are grain-free and hypoallergenic. So now, uh, Bossman, your, your, your story, what, one thing I love about it is the fact that you didn't give up. I know somebody's watching our video right now and your v I know for sure that somebody is trying hard is not picking but hearing your story is going to really motivate this person so during these hard times how were you able to like where did the motivation come from so the motivation came from a few friends a few breeder friends that I, I i was seeing the hard work they were doing and the results they were getting so sometimes i would just call them and talk to them one person was peter i was seeing peter's post i was seeing his peter vigilio Peter, House of Vigilio, yeah, let me just say it as well. So I used to call him, I asked him, Charlie, this, this, then he would tell me. He would advise, no, well, you have to do, you can do the progesterone test. He actually even, yeah, I remember he told me about the, about the progesterone test and all that. And sometimes I even asked him, oh, I have this meal. When do you think I can start crossing him? And Peter, Peter's like my second vet. So he told me, Charlie, try the supplement. Too. And I, I give the thanks to Peter for showing me what to do. So Peter helped. Adam for part, uh, Nikwe. Who else? Who else? Motivation. Rev to his past. Because I, I, I went to Rev's house a few times and Charlie, the way the dogs are and everything, I, I was really motivated. Because you see that they are getting puppies, they are selling. And you tell yourself that when you keep doing this, you get humble, this humble and weenie. Because I got some of my poodles, this beautiful one from them. So those are the few people. I'm sure there are others, maybe I've forgotten their names. but And Dr. Co Dr. Konito has been one of the life-changing people in my life. Because I, I always do progesterone. Even though I have a male, I, mean, I will go and do progesterone test to check that the time the male is crossing is the right time. So at least if the male crosses one or two, I know I'm okay. I don't do trial luck. I, I follow the right thing. There's sometimes there are people advise them, Charlie, do progesterone test. They'll say they, 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 they didn't work those things. I'm like, you just don't do that. You have to read about it. See how the time the dog will relate, the result you are getting, what it means and when and all those things. So when it comes to, I think, progesterone test, doing vaginal swab to see that there's nothing wrong with me, my own, even I'm using my own meal, my, my own meal, I check my females. When they are coming on heat, I'll put them on antibiotics. Sometimes I go for review, Connie will do CBC test and all that. I want to make sure everything is right. Because the heartbreak I've gotten in the past, no, I, I'm not doing trial like this time. Because it, it's business. If you are going to pay 120 Ghana for progesterone, and you think 120 Ghana is too much, you are going to do trial lack and you won't get puppies because of 120 CD, then you are not doing the right thing. So I don't mind spending the few hundred CDs, 200, 300, that's getting the right thing. I'll get my four or five puppies and I'll sell them and I know I'm getting this thing. Yeah. And since I started, 
I can say since I started doing pedestrian tests, I've crossed maybe about my own dogs 10, 12 times. It's only one that didn't work. All of them I got puppies. And that one, I didn't even use my meal. I took it somewhere. So my mind was okay. It might be the meal. This time around, I did progesterone test. I used my meal. She's pregnant. She's the one that I've, I've put there, yeah. So the test works. Even people who bring their dogs for crossing, if I tell them they don't want to pay for it, I add their charge to my cost. So you will know, but I do it for them. Because I don't just go and say something that I can't cross my dog, you know, pick. I'll do the test for you and I'll cross her. Even if it's just one cross, I'll do it at the right time. And everyone has had puppies. So I've been telling Dr. Cohen that some of the tests I even come and do, it's not my dogs. I do it for them, but they don't even know. So people should do it. If they mean business, they should do it. Nice one. That's the boss man, Mr. Ameyao. Don't pray, Deborah, of Rich Forever Kennels. And big shout outs to anybody that helped him and motivated him throughout this whole thing because it's not easy. Charlie. It's not easy at all, at all, at all, at all. So, Bosman will be wrapping up the interview very soon, but then um, maybe somebody is looking to get the poodle. They don't know much about the poodle. Can you tell us? Can you take us through some of the, their colors, what they are to expect and all of that? Just tell me. I think maybe some other time we can really have time to talk more and go deep. So, the poodles, they come in solid colors and party colors. The solid colors is when a dog has one color. So... We have the brown. The brown comes in two shades. That's the coffee and the chocolate. Or some people call it cafe uli. That's chocolate with milk. We have the black, the gray, and the silver. And there's cream, white, what else? And phantom. The phantom's color is like a rottweiler. It's black and has the points. Sometimes I get puppies like that. So those are the colors. And party colors are either black and white mixed or you can be brown and white. I've not seen brown and white here before. It's always black and white. Then a few others, but those ones, it's even hard to get. And there's the red poodle. The red too is really beautiful, but I don't have red at the moment. Yeah. So which color is this beauty? Yeah? So this is an apricot. Sometimes when it grows, it's a little darker. Yeah, but the apricot, it comes in shades. This is the dark. There's some of the cream ones you see are actually apricots too. Yeah, so... Yeah. And then I, I know with the poodles, they have um, the types to the miniature. So we have the toy, the miniature, and the standard. So the toy poodles are usually poodles that are about 10 inches tall, and their weight should be, be, be about 3 kilos and below. Then the miniature is between 11 to 15 inches, with the weights being above between, let's say, 3 kilos and about 6. And the standard poodles are the really huge ones. Those ones, they go, I don't know the heights, but they go, they go really high, and their weight is usually about 25 kilos above. Yeah. So you are into the toy and the miniature? Yeah, I'm into the toy and the miniature. I'm, I actually wish I had a standard poodle, but I realized that I've not seen any around, so unless I import it, yeah. I'm sure one day I would. Yeah, because the, the way they are hairy and they are big is really nice. They are really, really nice. Yeah. If somebody's looking for a family dog, like a family pet, you would you would recommend the, the 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 poodle to the person. So let's say the person has gotten the poodle. What what is the person to expect from these amazing breeds? Steph, first of all, poodles are hypoallergenic, so they don't shed. So if they are inside your house, you won't see hair anywhere. It is hundred percent guaranteed. They're hypoallergenic. Then they are very smart. If you check smartest dogs in the world, easily trainable dogs. I think poodles are second. They pick things easy. So adapting to your life. They are guaranteed. And they, they, are, they can be loud. So if you want something that has small security advantages, they will alert you that there's an intruder. They are not wild as if they will bite someone or anything. No, but they can actually show you some. And they are really lovely dogs. They are the, one of the best companions. If, if you want a toy dog, I'm not saying it's because I have poodles, but if you want a toy dog, you should get a poodle. If you, if you want a very small dog you can carry around, get a toy poodle. But if you don't mind, you want a miniature, you can get something like the one on you. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful dog lovers. You, you heard it from the boss man right here. He's talked about the poodle. I think maybe sometime we can really sit down and delve deeper. We'll talk more about the breed and all of that. So, b b boss man, I know somebody is just waiting for you to drop out your contact details, social media. 
and then they just link up with you. And also, do you do start services and those stuff? So just uh -huh, hit us up. And how many of the dogs do you have currently as well? So currently, I have eight. No, I have eight dogs here, but in total, there are eleven. Three is with my cousin there in his house, and I have puppies too. So if you want uh, a toy, a miniature poodle, I have puppies. My social media handle is uh, Rich Forever Kennel on Instagram. Yeah, but if you want to call to, you can call on 0555-087-197 or 020-9033-164. So these are the contact numbers. If you want to get a poodle, don't go and buy the Mix Mix for town. Those dogs, we, they call poodle, but you know very well it's not poodle. You people, when you are buying poodle, Google. Google and check, like compare what you are buying, the parent of the dog or the puppy to what they are selling to you. It's not because they say it's poodle, so I think it's because people bring dogs for crossing. They'll say poodle. When I see this dog, Charlie, you know, some are even hairy local dogs. It's not poodle. So <laughs> know what you are getting. Research, and we do start services too. We have this beautiful apricot meal for start. I have a black meal too, which is not here at the moment. So if you want start service, bring your dogs. We'll do it for you at affordable prices. <laughs> nice one. That's the that's the boss one right here. The boss, Amiyao. Don't pray, Deborah. His contact details are on the screen. Link up with him, dog lovers. Link up, sharp, 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 sharp. So, boss fan, before we get to my favorite part where we check out the names of the dogs and everything, I'd like you to say your final message to my dog lovers. Just look into our cameras and tell them something, boss. The final message, yeah, I've said this, but I'll say it again. Buy correct poodle. You see, buy correct dogs. People don't understand. If you buy a mixed breed, you are not guaranteed of what you are getting because the dog is coming from two different breeds. So you don't know exactly what you are getting. But if you buy a pure breed, if, even if it's a German Shepherd or Rottweiler, make sure you are buying a pure breed. So when you need a poodle, ask for toy poodle, miniature poodle, and make sure that you do your research and make sure you are getting the actual dog. It's not some... If it's a multiple you want, fine. We can understand. But those poodles that are not poodles, please don't say they are poodles. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice one dog lovers now let's go for a quick break we'll be back shortly and then when we get back we'll get to my favorite part we check out the names of the dogs and everything my name is solo one you can call me the dog blogger don't go anywhere okay dog lovers we had my favorite part where we check out the names of the dogs and all of that wow I love this. I love this. I love this. Okay, so le let's start with this beauty on my lap here. Yeah? This is my meal, one of my meals. It's called Vendi. Vendi Bright Star. That's, that's his name. Yeah. How old is he and what do you love about him? He turned one in April. He's not that old. I like What I like about him is that he's a good producer. He's smart. And he doesn't bark. He doesn't disturb. He's the, the, the quietest dog in this house. He's very well behaved. All my dogs. Yeah. I, I love him. I love him. I love him. Very beautiful meal right here. Okay, so we get to the next dog. So this is Star. The one you're holding. Yeah. She's very shy, so she says she's looking at a different place. But she's very stubborn as well. This is Nera. Then this Goldie. This is Bailey. So this, Bailey's puppy is this. Yeah. Then Millie, come here. This is Millie. Okay, dog lovers, have a look at Millie. This is Millie. So Millie, Bailey, Star, Vendi, there's Nera here, then Goldie. Then Destiny is in the cage. Yeah. Th this is the first dog you got? No, oh, this one? Dog is this one, Millie. Millie is the first dog. I got this dog just last year. So Millie and Nera, these two, I got them during the COVID time. Yeah. Then others came after. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful dog lovers. Wonderful family right there. And I think they are some other too. Annika, come. Before I forget Annika. Come on. So this is Annika. Come on. Yeah. This is Annika. Very beautiful. How, how old is she too? Annika is almost five years. She's Wow. Yeah. Even though she's five, I had her later. That's why she's older. So she's the grandmother of the house. <laughs> yeah. Wow, 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 dog lovers. So that's that's the, the, the poodles right here at Rich Forever Kennels. Very beautiful dogs right here. And I'm sure you love today's episode on GH Dogs. If in case you want to link up with 
Rich Forever Kennels, you pick the contact details on our screen. You pick the contact details on our screen and you link up with them. And maybe you are a breeder. You want GH Dog TV to visit your kennel. You want to be on our show. You're a dog lover. You are a dog trainer. You want us to visit your pet shop? Just pick the contact details on our screen. 055-328-4056. 055-328-4056. And if you're also new on our channel, you kindly subscribe to our channel. And then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content. You follow us on all of our social media handles as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at GH Dog Blogger. This episode was proudly sponsored by Josira Pet Food. The pet food with passion. You have dogs, you're looking for the right dog food. Nutritious, very good, helps them grow well. You look at your dog's coat, you see that, ah, my dog is growing very well. Just pick the contact details on our screen. Or when you go to any pet shop, you ask of a product from Josira Pet Food. Wet food, dry food, poppy milk, sauces. Just link up with them and then, trust me, you're going to love it. And the beautiful thing is they've even got dog food for diet-sensitive dogs, which are grain-free and hypoallergenic. Now, dog lovers, this is what we have for you today on GH Dog TV. Thank you so much for watching. And my name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger. Catch you another time. GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers.